Wood finishes 101. Introduction to wood finishes. So, essentially we're going to go over some of the basic wood finishes, do some introductions on what options are out there, um, and sort of basic procedure how to get started. A few choices of how to like, choose which one you can use, pros and cons, and all that. So first off, you've got to finish the surface of your wood projects. Um, this is essentially sanding. You want to make sure that you don't leave the imperfections on your project. Um, all times when you, when you end up machining apart, you end up getting some like, screw marks, like little burn marks, something like that. And if you apply a finish afterwards or a stain, it, does, it usually will highlight that feature. So what you're going to want to do is add like, a nice little sanding to it, get rid of that bucket out, um, it has a nice feel. Surface finish is only going to be, a, sorry, surface finish is going to be as smooth as your wood finish. So if you don't have a smooth wood finish, you're not going to have a smooth surface finish. Um, yeah, essentially a good way to start is we need 80 to 100 grit. A lot of people start at 60 grit, but you don't really have to start that low unless it's like a very deep sort of a gouge of wood. But you don't want to sand more than you have to because it's just wasting effort. Um, so of course your refiner is needed, but generally you need 100 is a good place to start. And a good place to finish is usually 120 or 150 grit. You don't really have to go super smooth. Um, fun fact, the smoothness of your grit will really depend on affect how your finish goes up. If you have larger gouges, somewhere like 80 grit or something like that, the wood will appear darker than if you have a 120 grit finish. Because the gouges take more of the uh, dye and stain. So, why finish? Uh, there are a few really good reasons. One of the biggest ones is water protection. So, when water, sorry, so wood is a living thing. So, like, if you have water on it, it'll take it in. If you have water out of it, not take it in, uh, put it out. So for example, it's like a really humid day, that water's going to absorb into your wood. If it's a really dry day, that water's going to come out of your wood and it sort of expands and refracts. Um, what finishing does, or adding a certain finish does, is reduces the impact of your wood. Um, so it doesn't like completely really stop it, but it reduces it. That's like, that's bad. You don't want that in your wood. So if you have like a table or something, you put a nice finish on it and protect it. That will help, help the longevity of your piece. Particularly because, you know, cups, people, and weird stuff that will mess it up. Another good reason is scratch protection. It's almost like if you get a table, if you put things on it, you can hit it into acid, you can scuff and scratch up your wood. So, a certain finish helps protect against that. It sort of adds a protective layer onto the board. Yeah, man, you don't want that. It also keeps it in really nice conditions. So a going back to the whole surroundings of your wood, it needs really dry out. Um, the water and moisture in your wood is going to be deep. So that has a nice, makes it more prone to cracking, makes it more prone to warping. It just makes your piece not last as long. Um, so adding a finish on protects from that and helps make it a longer life. It also really makes that great opposite decorative thing. It can be gorgeous, like, yo, that's, that's okay, but that's like great, right? You really see the definition between grain, it really like accentuates the beauty of it. So that gives into the sort of category of what's out there, like what are you going to put on this wood? Um, in general, one of the ways you can categorize it is by two different types of finish. You either have a surface finish or you have a penetrating finish. So you kind of see in this, where a surface finish sits on top of the wood, where a penetrating finish goes into the wood. So the penetrating finish is like throws that it drives into the wood. Um, it looks really nice and natural because it goes into the wood, it becomes a part of the wood, it's not something sitting on top of it. So you get a nice like you can actually put the wood underneath it. If you really like feeling like rain or a natural thing, that's like a benefit. Um, it's really easy to apply. You usually just pour on the rag, rub it in there, put a little gold and let it set to dry out. It's really easy to repair also because of that same reason. Um, let's say it starts to wear out one area where you use more. Then you can just like pour it on the rag, apply it in there, let it dry out, and we'll go. The issue with it is that it's not nearly as protective as the surface finish because it dries into the wood, again, add an active protective layer on the top. Um, it also will need to be reapplied over time. So a lot of times, the penetrating finishes are oil based, and so that will either leave, you know, keep touching it from the ground, or if it's a non drying oil, it'll leave over time. It's never really sets in there. A good examples that you often see is like mineral oil, linseed oil, tongue oil, that sort of stuff. Yeah, mostly, mostly oils. 
surface fish is very, uh, the pros of them is that it's very protective. Um, they don't really need that much maintenance to pour it on that one time to get that surface fish on there, and it's good to go for a lot. That's what you normally see on tabletops because they're in high glare situations. Um, they don't really need a mace, and the nice thing about it is that you can apply it over a stain. The stain will be too cool and spray itself, so when you apply like a penetrating finish, it's not going to be near this because you have two different things going into the wood, right? So with surface finish, um, so you can top that, unless you have that stain application. Some of the cons that's hard to repair, a lot of times in half damage on that surface, you might have to take off the whole surface and get my full surface skin. Also, the big complaint about the A lot of people say it seems artificial, looks artificial, and there's a lot of high gloss situations. And like, oh, that's wood, but we're really looking at plastic on the top. And that's not the complaint. Um, this can be mitigated and help out and reduce the gloss situation when you apply it. Some good examples are lacquer, polymer, varnish, polyurethane, that sort of stuff. So, here's an example of a penetrating cream application. Um, this is used with bitter oil. Undreated, this is like a nice butcher cloth. Uh, this is just a beauty of mono coat, which we'll talk about later as well. But it's got a nice darkness to look a little bit, um, and it's more into the wood rather than on This is a bit of some surface finishes. This, I believe, is a lacquer, and that is a awesome lacquer, actually. Um, this is a harder, high gloss one using out of the application. Lacquer is a really waterproof, so use the both. So, linseed oil. One of the linseed oil and tongue oil are some of the more common penetrating finishes you'll see in stores. Um, the basics of linseed oil. It polymerizes over time. So something that linseed oil by itself really doesn't dry that quickly. So what people end up finding out is that if you boil linseed oil, it'll actually polymerize a lot quicker than the raw stuff by itself. Um, this makes it a lot thicker, you know, uses a lot more energy, so it dries quicker. What they've done modernly is added a lot of different like, chemicals to it, um, other additives, that way it dries quicker, even quicker yet. So a lot of times if you go to the store and you look for boiled linseed oil, that's what you end up getting, you want to swap additives and chemicals. What you end up having to look for usually is, um, what's it called? The, the heat-treated or polymerized oil for the stuff that's just like linseed oil that has been boiled down, that's it, no additives. Um, you do a lot of additives. Linseed oil often off gases, VOCs, and other chemicals that are harmful. But you can try and mitigate that using you know, just the purely boiled stuff, and that's the stuff that you use to make haven. No VOCs in make haven. Um, you can apply it at home. So, but make sure it's really well ventilated, you know, gas mask, all that stuff. Safety first. Um, tongue oil, on the other hand, it can provide a relatively hard surface finish. It protects against water, dust, and alcohol, and the gas is a, lot, a little bit better than oil because that little hardness to it. Um, it's not really most durable. Again, penetrating finishes, you're going to have to apply again over time as they sort of wear off. Pure tongue, like linseed oil, will take more time to dry than additives or variations, but it's better than linseed oil. Unlike, sorry, it's better than linseed oil. Unlike linseed oil, you can actually use the pure stuff by itself. Um, it's good for food-related projects, like, you know, bowls, spoons, things like that, because it's like an intricate little seed. Um, it does have poor penetration by itself, so a lot of times people recommend is mixing it in like mineral spirits at 50%. Uh, what is that called? 50% dilution, so that way it sort of absorbs better into the first coat, and then you can go with the pure stuff right afterwards. So that way it gets that first layer of deeper penetration um, instead of building on top. So, one of the things that you end up seeing in stores a lot of times is variations on the tongue oil where again, they'll add these additives to make it dry faster. And that's, again, VOC warning, you're probably not gonna wanna use that at Make Haven, but regular tongue oil has a, is a okay. You also have mineral oil. So this sort of goes back to the two types of oils there are. There's the wet oil versus not wet oil. The wet oils don't actually dry and polymerize over time, so they sort of will stay a little bit slick. Um, mineral oil is one of those it won't actually polymerize, it'll be a little slick. Um, that means that if you use it, let's say, on a cutting board, really popular use for it, you're going to have to reapply that over time because it's going to wash away and get more of it. But really easy application, really great. It's wonderful for cutting services because you cut into it, it doesn't matter if any of the added gets what you're cooking on, right? It's just it's mineral oils, whatever. 
Um, then it goes back to Rubio Monaco, which we were talking about a little bit earlier. It's on that table. It's a really nice surface fish from what I've read from a lot of people. Um, it's water resistant, it is strong. Um, there's also a bit zero VOC version of it, so that you can use that thing. Um, it has the ability to color as well as protect the blue. So you, can add, you don't have to add a um, separate staining by yourself. This product can also be a bison. And it's a little bit pricey, but it can be a good investment depending on what you're using. Surface finish. So one of the like first surface finishes that you will end up seeing probably in a lot of places is varnish. Varnish is a mixture of oils and resins. Essentially, varnish is like you're dissolving the resins into something. Um, so for example, long oil varnishes contain a high percentage of oil, and it's usually used for outdoor projects. Medium oil varnish contains yeah, you know, less oil than lots of other um, This is used mostly in the interior market as well. And then there's also short oil varnish, which requires really high heat to use. And so you usually won't see that yourself, you'll see that in like industrial applications. Um, it's also under the name baking enamels. But varnish itself is very water, heat, chemically resistant, um, so it offers a really great protection. There's a few different varnish types, which Terms of characteristics based on what presence are dissolved into the varnish. Um, Alki, Alki, standard all purpose interior, that's the one that you often see. Um, there's phenolic, which is made with tongue oil a little bit. Um, that's usually used outside externally. And there's also urethane, which offers better heat, salt, and abrasion protection. Um, this can be mixed with other oils to make it more easy to apply. So the key thing about varnish is that you pour on, you sort of brush in one direction, and then you have to let it sit and dry out. Um, there are ones that you can rub in, but that's these like sort of mixed applications, so like Danish oil. Danish oil is not a true oil, it is a mixture between varnish and true oils. Um, teak oil is also similar in this way. Um, a lot of varnishes have ends in it, and so you should not use them inside. So again, you can't really apply that varnish to your projects at Rick Haven, but in like well ventilated areas at home, um, as long as you have good protection, that's great. There are some alternatives out there that are claimed clean to be free and eco-friendly, it might be a work for you to uh, Eco's wood shield varnish is one of the ones here. Another one that's sort of very similar to varnish is polyurethane. Um, this is more like a modern day varnish. It is transparent, water fungus, mildew resistant, it's very protective, um, it adds a nice layer of protection on top of the wood. It is oil based and water based, so two different varieties. Um, Oil based varieties require fewer coats and it's applied quicker, whereas water based, you guess, is if the resins aren't dissolved in oil, they're dissolved in water instead. Um, so it just depends on the water uh, evaporating away. These are the more thick ones, though, and you have to have applications in the right temperature range. Um, you also be a bit easier to mess up, but if you're used to using them, it should be a fine application. Um, this you know, sometimes is considered classy looking wood. So because it's going to lay on top of it, it's like, oh, it's so shiny, it's definitely not wood. You can tell that. If you apply thin coats, um, if you reduce the amount of gloss in your application, you can really reduce that. So if you don't really care about having that thick type of layer, you don't have to make it more plastic. This also has a lot of VOCs a lot of the time because it's oil based. Um, but there are VOC free versions out there. Uh, Pro Marine tabletop epoxy resin is one that I use, and it's VOC free. Um, there's also water-based resins varnishes out there, and yeah, again, they're less forgiving for green, and then um, low VOC, but they're still solid like benzene in them, so it doesn't mean they're like completely free game to use fat making and stuff. Another service finish is lacquers. Lacquers are a general winner and usually like a favorite amongst the girls. Um, they dry quickly, they look lovely, they're moderate to excellent durability depending on what kind of lacquer you use. So there's a few different types of lacquers. There is nitrocellulose lacquer, which is generally you'll see if something's just labeled with, oh, I am lacquer. That's probably the variety that it is. Um, it's got moderate water resistance. It's not sensitive. It's a little bit sensitive to heat. Um, one of the biggest drawbacks is that sort of yellows of the ages. There's another type of lacquer that's very similar to that one called acrylic modified, which I think is also labeled as CAB. Um, that stands for cellulose acetate butyrate. Uh, that stuff is basically the same sort of thing as actual cellulose, but it won't yellow over time. Then there's also the catalyzed lacquer. It's just made with a bit of urea in it. Um, it's like, I believe, 
three different types of acid you'll use in it. But you can mix it yourself or you can mix it later. Um, sorry, they can mix it yourself or they can mix it for you at the shop and you buy it in. It's very durable and it, added, it adds more resistance to a very durable finish. Um, paint. Paint is a surface finish. And people often think of it, but if you look at the outside houses, we paint them for a reason. It really protects the wood and the paint that you use. Um, you don't have to get VOC paint. There's also something called milk paint, which I learned through this sort of thing. Um, it's an all-natural thing made of weird milk combinations, I guess. But it's really good with protection. It's the issue that a lot of people see with it is that it covers up the wood so you can't see and appreciate the grain. But it is really good protection for water, fungus, and that sort of thing. So it's always an option out there as well. So, what should you use to finish your wood? It really depends on the application and the type of wood you have. Um, the coils, they really exaggerate the beauty of the wood. It's a very good finish, protective finishes. However, there is that issue where they're not nearly as protective as varnishes or surface coils. So if you have, like, again, a tabletop or coffee table, um, oil finishes might not be your friend for that because you're going to be bumping into it and wearing it down over time. But it is really good for, like, a beautiful cherry, maple, something that you really want to look at the green and have a really pop out look nice on a shelf um, or a cabinet or something that you don't expect to be hidden and beaten up all the time. Um, it, there are some light color woods that can cause yellow and really dark decorative woods might darken more over time. Not over time. Darken more quickly. So it does affect the color of the wood. So that's just something you need to find. Um, varnishes, again, high wear, high traffic applications such as dinner table, coffee table, that sort of thing. Um, it's really good for external applications, like you're making outdoor furniture or a boat. That's yeah, perfect. That's kind of the kind of protection you want to have. Um, Water-based is a good bet on lighter woods because it preserves that lighter wood color. It doesn't darken it with the oils. It makes sense that. Shellac and lacquer. We didn't really talk too much about shellac, but you should look into it. It's loved by people that use it. Um, it's very good for colorful applications because it helps preserve the color in the wood. Uh, one thing I agree about that is that it sort of pulls the pigment out, preserves it in the shellac itself as it dries, so it helps make that a longer term application. But it is more more a uh, chemical and heat. Um, this is like a nice little table I found of uh, a few uh, actual uh, surface finishes that you can look at and some pros and cons to this one. Um, so that's just a good reference courtesy of Sustainable Northwest. That's uh, Surface Finish 101. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So it is.